the three most exciting and important agents that we have to use for the care of our patients include ibrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab. Now these three agents really afford a great deal of flexibility in choosing the best therapy for a patient and really induce very dramatic responses. The thing that I find very important is, you know, whereas ibrutinib is very well tolerated most of the time, there are a few people who really have contraindications to it, namely people who have bleeding risks or atrial fibrillation. And those people, you know, venetoclax and obinutuzumab offer great options. In patients who don't want to have an IV infusion or patients who don't want to actually have to worry about the tumor lysis risk, you can certainly use either the venetoclax or the obinutuzumab respectively. So we really have with those three agents a great deal of flexibility and what's more important is the agents really are able to induce very long-term and deep remissions in patients. So the one thing that's important to keep in mind is whereas ibrutinib is able to have a very, very good outcome at five years, it really takes a long time to actually induce a deep response. So in those patients who have some potential indication of either Richter's transformation or developing a, a resistance to ibrutinib, and those are namely the patients who have a 11Q deletion or 17P deletion, notch one mutation, or you know one of the certain V genes that seem to be stereotypical. Those patients, because of their risk of transforming, might be better served by more rapid depletion and so of their CLL clone. So in those patients, the use of obinutuzumab or venetoclax affords certain options, um, excuse me, affords certain advantages.